Oi, what's the best game where you get to eat pie? Well, what's the best game where you play a dead guy? Aye? You'll find out in DJ 247's podcast. Here, what's the best game where you swing from a rope? And what's the best game where you battle the Pope? Like I said, you will find out in this your podcast. Hello and welcome to VG247's Best Games Ever podcast, the show where we like to find the best game within a very specific category, uh, chiefly to cause arguments amongst ourselves. For example, this week, we're looking for the best game that has DLC or an expansion that's better than the main game. I'm joined today by Kelsey Rayner, Sharif Saeed and Tom Ari. I know what two of them have picked, but Tom is refusing to tell me because he's like that, he's weird, but as we all know, the only real point of this show is to give Tom an excuse to go off on one about toddlers doing a poo in Lidl, etc. So, uh, Tom, you've got, you've got a nice story for us later, yeah? Yeah. A new well, one? There's two stories that are sort of linked. We're getting two stories, right? Okay, that's, that's interesting. They'll be, they'll be told as one. Is it like but an episode of The Simpsons se- where it's like it, it starts off with a B plot and then the A plot starts like after the opening? Yeah. Okay, sort of. that's interesting. That's nice. Okay, I'm very much looking forward to that. Yeah, very exciting. Okay, uh, we need to point out to people as well that this will be the last ever video edition of this podcast, sadly. Uh, For reasons, it will continue uh, on uh, the audio version, which you can subscribe to on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your actual proper podcast. Because the thing about podcasts, right, is that you meant you meant you listen to this when you're doing the dishes or on your commute or you know driving to sell a pig or something right you're not meant to be you're not meant to be this is meant to be the only thing you're doing yeah we're not all mm. about that we don't want that much scrutiny it's not good enough to be the, your entire focus is it god no of course not and do any of us want that pressure i don't think so it's not like it's not mock the week <laughs> someone mock asked week. someone asked if someone was doing the dishes last week have we got any background noises this week uh we we very much might do see the 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 thing about that right is what happened was uh my wife didn't realize that we were sitting down to record and had put the washing machine on and what that guy is talking about is the washing machine getting up to a full spin and rattling some of the dishes that were in the on the tray above it so which is this is interesting this is so interesting podcast chat but that's what that guy was referring to yes what, hang on we all work where from would, home there's going to be background noise right where would you put plates on top of the fucking washing machine no is the, the, the washing, place to washing machines under the counter we don't live in mansions yes. sharif do we but i mean we've got limited where, space but that's like no that like any rattling is going to destroy these unless these plates are made out of they're not fucking it's not they're not Liam, don't tell your wife sharif said no <laughs> Any Sharif, <laughs> how small you, is it? <laughs> Dude, this is Britain. This now go and sort it out, Jim. Move them all off the top of this the washing is Britain, machine. Sharif. We all live in tiny fucking hovels, right? <laughs> it's, things on top of each other. You, I've got some of the. <laughs> The cat has got to sleep in a hammock above <laughs> the baby, right? Exactly, right? You know, exactly. it's just it's chaos. It's got right? little trees or scratch or thing. That's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. So look, it's fine. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, uh, yeah, I live in a small flat in Bristol. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain this to, to Sharif later in DMs. I'll provide photos to you because I know that this will bother you for a while. Uh, okay, right. Let's get on with it. I think. Uh, oh, snack check. I forgot to do snack check. Someone had a go me about that. Right. I've got some Pocky supplied generously by Mr. Will Judd from Digital Foundry, who uh, what he lives nearby. Uh, he said, do you want a headset? I've got lots of headsets. Does anyone at Eurogamer want a headset? So I was like, I'll have a headset. So he delivered this to my house. He just walked up and, like, it just appeared. And in the box was also some Pocky. So... Uh, and he specifically said, "I want you to do it. I want you to do it as a snack check on the podcast, which was very nice of him." I can't so, believe you live near Will. Yeah, so thank you, Will. I'm going to enjoy this pocky, and I'm going to start eating it when I get bored. Right? It's a wireless headset. Yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? Which do you like better, uh, this one, the the headset, or the snack? Uh, I haven't tried the snack yet. I'm, what uh, is pocky? What is that? It's wee sticks. That one's broken. It's wee sticks. It's, a stick. it's like. Wee biscuit sticks, but it's like it's got like a sort of matcha, sort of chocolatey thing around it. Oh, that sounds really nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, 
obviously a Japanese thing. I'm going to um, I'm going to start eating them theatrically. If any of your pitches bore me to death, I looked mm. at uh, what was the last to eating that during Tom's the 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 terrible uh, what was it the the beef jerky knot thing dried meat that you showed off the other week uh, that huh? everyone was it was it a picture that you sent in Slack in your abomination of a breakfast where there was or was it something on a podcast. Uh, it was like, it's called, it's called pepperoni. It's it. called pepperoni something. Pepperoni. 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 Okay. Pepperoni. I looked for that. I didn't uh, have pepper. Just for just, I didn't have pepperoni. Pepperoni for breakfast. I had no. cabanossi for breakfast, which is like posh pepperoni. Pepperoni. All right. So it's a slightly different thing. I've also got a giant can of monster, which I, I definitely need when Tom's going to be talking. So, uh, um, mm. Kelsey's okay. mic is not on. Okay, now it's not on for sure. Okay, I thought you were just being quiet, Kelsey. Kelsey, do you want to do you want to ask what you were asking about parking? I was just asking why it was not in the box. Have you taken it out of the box, or did it just come in that packet? It just came in that packet. I think Will maybe had like a box of Pocky full of, of them, yeah, packs, and was he was just... distributing them among the uh, because he's a very generous man. Um, Is it Japanese? That's really food? nice. Yeah, yeah. It's very nice. I think there's um, loads of different flavors. Yeah, there's loads. There's loads. They've also okay. got like, they've also got about seventy different versions of Kit Kat over there. And the best one I've ever tried, and it sounds mental, is the uh, the sweet potato one, um, which you you put in the oven and you eat it warm. What? what? It's what happens gorgeous. To the chocolate, though? What happens it's to the chocolate. You were sorry. But you said you put a Kit Kat in the oven. Yeah. What? How does that work? You meant to you meant to heat it up slightly. You don't like roast it. You just heat it up. Yeah, but chocolate it's or milk. Gentle roasting. Well, it, well, it's not. It, it's designed so that you can put it in the oven. They ha they have thought of this, but it's like a sweet potato sort of cake, Kit Kat thing. It's beautiful. Uh, my old flatmate brought some back from Japan once, and he was like, "Here, try this." And I was like, "I'm not eating a sweet potato Kit Kat. Do I look oh. like an idiot?" And then I had some, and it was just like the great, the best thing I've ever tasted. Yeah. And I felt like an idiot. Anyway, let's get on with it because uh, we've got a lot to get through. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm anticipating falling asleep at some point because we've got Sharif and Tom on. Uh, first of all, let's go for... <laughs> first of all, um, Kelsey, because you haven't been on for so long and it's really nice to see you again. Um, what is your pick for this episode? What is the best game? Hate going first. Um <laughs> So my pick, I largely just picked it just to annoy Tom, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, be more interesting. And it is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe mm. and the booster course pass for that. Largely because the booster course pass adds Waluigi Pinball, which as far as I'm concerned is the best Mario Kart track ever. So that's why this particular DLC is better than the base game. That and it also just, it just adds so many tracks from like the Nintendo Wii that are some of the best ones like Coconut Mall and Rainbow Road. And I guarantee that most people probably spend their time playing the booster course pass more than the actual OG tracks for that game. I think it's the original it, it's track, only so. out on Switch, right? Like that's it's Switch, yeah. And it's just remakes. I of also older... just think that that as an expansion, because it's built into the whole Nintendo Switch Online subscription pass model. Yeah. I just think that if you have a Nintendo Switch and you're playing Nintendo Switch games regularly and using that, it's basically like a free extra DLC. Same okay. with sort of the Animal Crossing DLC. Um, and I think I think that's a pretty neat argument for it. Um, but yeah, yeah it's just it's the tracks it's are just good. so much better, and the fact that they released them in I waves as well, so you I constantly had something tracks, else to look forward though. to. I don't know if they are better tracks. How can you say that when Waluigi well, Pinball is right there, and the best version of Rainbow Road is right better. there? I, I was disappointed that some of the tracks I wanted weren't weren't made. Which ones? Like uh, Cooper Trooper Beach in sixty four. That... It's not in it. It's not in it? No, I thought it pretty, was. Pretty sure oh, no, I'm not. thinking of Cheap Cheap Beach. So that's that's why it will never be a good DLC, because they didn't put the best track in there. So, unfortunately, you've lost. That's that. <laughs> the best track <laughs> is still Waluigi Pinball. They also had yeah. the Animal Crossing track in the booster course, which was nice. Is this, crossover. Does this DLC include any vehicles, or is it just... 
It was just tracks, as far as I'm concerned, I think. Where they've and been characters, added, they maybe? had a few new characters now and again. I'm not sure if they were yeah. tied to the tracks or not. But they where did, added the, where did the Mercedes yeah. come in? When did that get added? That was ages ago. That was like... I think that was separate. That was like the original thing. lot of stuff. They just added yeah. it as a promo thing, right, I think. Or like with this 200cc or whatever they call it. Yeah. I think I think the Mercedes is my favourite car. It's my favourite car. You just yeah, just stick that bit out. I like so the little caterpillar one. Have you ever driven a Mercedes, Jim? No. Okay. <laughs> so How really can you say that if you've never driven a Mercedes? Uh, yeah. Well, I've I never driven a fucking Mario Kart car either, but I mean, like... <laughs> no, but you get the feel of it when you play it. You get the feel of a Mercedes when you play it in, in Mario Kart. Are you in the backseat? The... Oh, in the back. It's oh, like, look, okay. look. Your favorite listen, car in Mario Kart. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I thought you meant like... I've not driven a real Mercedes, but like, I've okay. played a set of Corsa, right? What's the best uh, car you've ever driven, Jim? Mm, if you favorite... say a Mini Cooper. <laughs> my face, not Mini Cooper. No, this is going to sound pathetic, but my favorite car I ever drove was a Peugeot... Uh, 306 turbo diesel uh, and I think it was a Peugeot car from... 306 yeah 306. It was, wow it was it was a, a long time ago it would be considered a classic now I think if you could find a working one uh, it was a turbo diesel and when it was a heavy thing but it was a, like it was a, it was a hatchback and it was so powerful and when you put your foot down it really fucking went and it was my favorite car I've ever driven mm. so, wow I'm just looking at this and like the they literally have like Choco Mountain and Mushroom Gorge. How can you say it's not better than the best? Explain my game? reasoning. I'll explain my reasoning. It's because there's no Cuba Tree. The Ridge. Shroom Ridge. <laughs> right. Who keeps clicking Shroom the pen? Ridge. Who keeps Sorry. clicking the pen? I realise it's probably just a habit, but it's just yeah. all I can hear is the pen. No, it's fine. The pen. Is that gone. why you went a bit mad earlier? Because I noticed that there was a point, like about maybe five minutes ago, where you were just like. You look like you were about to throw the keyboard. Um, <laughs> or is that just a general I feel like I'm in school again. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And teacher's telling me off with fiddling with the pen. Um, I need something else. But yeah. It isn't noisy. So, I mean, is that... How would we feel about Mario Kart 8 in terms of... Because we didn't get a brand... We didn't get a new Mario Kart for the Switch. We kind of just got a redux on the, yeah. on the new Mario Kart, which mm. it deserved because... And I, I understand why they did that because basically nobody would have played it because nobody had a Wii U. Um, but do we feel robbed of a proper Mario Kart installment no. on the Switch? No. They've added a lot to it as well, right? This, this, whole, this whole discussion is about... so. I think it's fine. I think that's it, though. They can't. The next one's got to be like an actual new. Give us something original in Mario Kart, otherwise it's going to feel just like another expansion. Mm. They should have more more Mercedes cars. Mm. You know, more cars. They should put. A, they should put a Peugeot three hundred six in. <laughs> Maybe that, they will, because that that would do really well around the. Uh... What were those three wheeled cars called? The little Robin ones. Reliant yeah, Robin. Robin Reliant, Reliant Robin. Yeah. We need yeah, one of those. Reliant. I want. A, I was genuinely looking at Reliant Supervans the other day to see how much you could get one for, and I found one for um, fifteen hundred quid. And I was like, "That's really, really tempting." I'm surprised but, they don't have any uh, co-marketing uh, thing with a Japanese manufacturer to put like a Toyota or a Lexus in there. Uh, like some of these are cars you talking would... about Mario Kart or Reliant yeah. Mario Kart no Mario Kart <laughs> I, you, I was like what are you on about they no like a Japanese company you would have yeah. they would have like some sort of like synergy I guess and like and there are some yeah. sporty Japanese cars uh, that are well you, you don't want so. the sporty Japanese cars you want the you want the ones that they do like their sandwich deliveries in you want to get a Nissan Cube in there that is the most Mario mm. Kart in the car mm. um I reckon that because it's because it's like it's it's got a slightly too high center of gravity and it's just like a sort of crappy little van, but it's lovely and it's beautifully Japanese. Um, so I think that would work. Plus, Bowser I can would imagine definitely like fit in a it. bunch of little toads just hiding in the back of that van. <laughs> and when you finish the race, the doors open and they all like jump yeah, out and, and they all run out. And they've all been eaten like. <laughs> when you watch the replay, it's this, the uh, the the back uh, the back pops yeah. off, and this is how they throw the banana feet, the banana and all the stuff. The shells <laughs> on the back is like they're, they're in the back, back like and then just they're all eating down. snacks. That's how they get the banana peel in the first place. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like they have a whole stash in the back. Of the <laughs> that would be great. That would actually be great. <laughs> on, on the podium, Bowser's like hoovering it out. Um, okay, right. 
that's good. I like Mario Kart. Everyone likes Mario Kart. I think people. I think if you don't like Mario Kart, there's something wrong with you. Actually, ah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's one of those it's fundamental so sort of. You are sorry. Do you not like it? I'm fine with it. I'm fine with Mario like, Kart. Nah. but like, don't let's not be crazy here. He's like, I, f- I ate Mario Kart. I ate it because it's. It's joyful and it's for kids. It's because it's unfair, isn't it? When you're winning and you get <laughs> the blue shelled. That's why he hates it. Yeah. It's unfair. Yeah. But the trick the trick the trick is to be so far ahead that it doesn't matter you get blue shelled. That's the challenge. That's the, the trick point. is always to have enough that you don't need anybody else, just in Mario Kart in general. The That's trick is just, to get yeah. one of those, I can't remember what they're called, but those little boxes, the only thing that can deflect a blue shell. Mm. And then just hold on to that for the entire match. The honking you have box. To be in first. I've only ever done that like twice. It's such a rush when you're like, yes. Like, oh my god, I actually did it. Yeah. Um, I've only ever won Mario Kart when we played against literal children as well. But you know, it's fine. Um, all right, okay. What's next? I'm gonna pick just because I'm really, really curious uh, as to what you've actually picked, Tom. We're mm-hmm. gonna go with you next. What have you got? Well. I've got, I've got like a choice I was going to make, and I realised oh, I didn't like it for multiple reasons. Why I picked it, so I picked something else. But before we get to that, I'm going to tell you my little story. Right, so I've had an arm injury for God knows how long, like a year, maybe longer. It's just mm. a persistent arm injury, and then I was uh, going to wash my hands. I pressed down on the soap dispenser and I've done something to my arm now, my right arm, which means I can barely move it all wow. because I pressed down on a soap dispenser. Right. So that's bad. Booked a physio appointment for next week. If anyone's interested, mm-hmm. um, so hopefully they'll be like, Oh yeah, it's this, do these things and it'll get better. Not that's absolutely screwed and you're never going to bed to use your arm again. Um, but anyway, I thought that was amusing in that the main cause of pain was because I was trying to dispense some soap. Um, but then earlier this week, I think it was, or well, maybe end of last week, Sunday, I think it was, maybe, um, I heard this noise. It sounded like a lawnmower. It's like, what's that noise? It sounded like people are mowing their lawns. It was raining and it's like not the best day for gardening in general. And I went into the bathroom because that's where the noise is coming through the window from. And there was the most enormous bee Biggest bee I've ever seen. It was like the size of a small mouse. What? Um, what? What? Massive bee. It was enormous. It was making one hell of a noise, like unbelievable amount of noise. It was like just flying around on the the blind in my bathroom. I was like, I've got to get this outside because if my daughter sees it in the house, she's going to freak out. She's going to run around. She's going to walk into a wall or something. Because my kids can't deal with flying things. Like they just they just don't like them very much. So I was like, I've got to get this out of this house. So I've got a little cup. Uh, Jim's laughing at the just the how my kids are traumatized by flying animals. Yeah, I'm laughing. I'm laughing um, at. I'm laughing at your child's distress. That's what I'm laughing. Yeah. At. So I got a little cup and I got a piece of card and I got the bee in the cup, slid the card under it. And it was like, and you would not believe the vibrations. This bee, like it was proper. It's like it's unbelievable in size. Like I couldn't believe. I was like, "You touch this cup, you won't believe the vibrations this bee is making." It was just in there, just humming away wherever it does. Um, I was like, "Get it out! We're going to outside." We went out. Kids came, looked at this this bee as it was released into the wild, and um, I was outside, and then the door shut, and uh, we couldn't get back in. Right. The door was shut. I was like, I signed. I've got the key in my pocket, right, with my shorts. Um, and then I couldn't get the pocket open, right? The zip was stuck. Couldn't get it in. So there's this bee flying around. My, my shorts were like, the zip wouldn't open. I couldn't get back in the house. Um, I was like, my wife was like, just just uh, open, open the zip. What's the problem? So I was like, I can't. The zip is stuck. And we were like, I said, have you not got a key? And she's like, no, I haven't got a key. I was like, can't believe what's just happened. Um, and then I remembered that there was actually a key I'd left out for the cleaner to get in while we're out one week. 
It's like, it's fine. I'll go and get this this other key. It's fine. It's sorted. Don't worry about the pocket situation. Um, and then as I was bending down to get the key out of this little, we had this little thing. It's it's stored in secretly. Um, <laughs> my son was some reason looking over my shoulder, and I I I got up without knowing he was there, and I sort of elbowed him in the face. <laughs> Um, but in doing so, I was like, oh, I've got to move out of the way. Otherwise, I'm going to like knock him over. So I sort of swerved a bit. And in doing so, I've injured myself in like my lower hip. I don't know what you'd call it. So much that I can barely walk. So I've now got an arm I can barely move, a left leg that barely functions, um, and a pair of shorts that are no longer function with pockets. Mm. It's a bit sad, isn't it? Is this the same pair of shorts from the episodes a couple of weeks ago? It's hard to say. I mean, it may be the same <laughs> same pair of shorts. Um, but yeah, my pick was uh, Bioshock 2 uh, Minerva's Den DLC, right? Which is actually very... It's, Bioshock 2 is good. And this, this DLC was... It kind of felt a bit like Bioshock, the original, but with the mechanics that were better in 2. But then I thought, I got given that DLC. I didn't buy it. So I felt a bit like, mm, I'm always like a bit pro like things you've experienced yourself. And when I did play it, I thought, the only DLC I've ever bought myself is the track expansions to Project Gotham Racing 2 on the Xbox. And there's two that you get. You get Paris and you get... Um, is it Long Island or Long Beach or something like that? It's like, and there's two extra track expansions and they're really good. I played them loads. Paris one in particular was really good. Um, and PGR2 is the greatest racing game ever. So it puts me right up. I, I mean, would I say the DLC is better than the main game? That is a, that's a push. But I'm going to say it is with this podcast. Definitely better. These two added bits they put on it afterwards. Um, so PGR2 is my pick because it's just going to win because the game is so much better than the other choices. You don't seem entirely convinced that those two extra tracks are actually not, better than the game, though. I'm not at all, but <laughs> I felt like I had to pick something I actually bought, and I can't think of any other DLC I've actually bought. You've never bought a DLC in your life. You've been in video games I, for like 20 years. This is like, apart from like if it's in a collection, like it may be like, don't What's like... That mean? Uh, Mass Effect trilogy, and you get all the DLC added in. Have you never? Have sure. you never bought a season pass? No. Why yeah. would I? Because you want to play the um, DLC. I get given everything for free. That's just part <laughs> of it. You get all everything for free. That's, you sign in. When you're, I'm a games journalist now. Mm. You never buy any games ever again, and you get sent everything. Okay. So That's works. true. That's true. You know what? Like it's 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 the only perk of the job, and it's great. Like. Uh, a game. I do look back and I think, how much money would I have spent on all these different games? Yeah, yeah. That's lot. why. That's why games industry is struggling because there's so many games journalists <laughs> not buying games. Because there's about <laughs> eighty people in the UK who write for games websites, and we're all rinsing it. The um... there are, to be fair, there's quite a few games where I've like had them for review or whatever, and then enjoyed them so much that I've then rebought the game for a friend so that they experience it. Because it's like, oh, I should pass that privilege along i've never done that just to be clear <laughs> jim just mops them all up and then waits jim 10 the years so everyone's forgotten and then sells them on ebay i don't do that i don't do that i love i just love getting codes for shit i don't even care what it is uh, the um <laughs> you like to see the number on the steam library we've got, to say, yeah, totally. we've got to say stuff that really gets people riled up to get more people in <laughs> listening like i don't even play these games i just ask for them for freebies um, what I mean, say? I don't fucking uh, play them just because I've not got any time to it, but I like having them. I take more codes for higher scores. There's... <laughs> so if they give me like five codes so I can hand out, I give the games a higher score. Yeah, yeah. It's not true. That isn't true, to be yeah. clear. I'm just, yeah. if you're listening to this, get enraged and come and listen. And yeah. Then more views, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, the biggest perk of the job is when a big publisher offers you 40 grand to say that their game's all right mm. that's good because that that's, you know, what, that's how you could afford that dish the, the washing machine yeah that rattles your uh yeah exactly exactly your plates. 
you know that that paid for the that paid for the kitchen yeah so you know it's you give something a four star review and and say it's got problems but it's you know it's fairly enjoyable and obviously ubisoft have given you a big fat check to say that because that's that's definitely worth uh, their time and effort um but yeah um there's not many perks to the job but you know like free games and and uh, imaginable unimaginable wealth is <laughs> one of them mm. quite literally unimaginable i Very can't imagine having any fucking money <laughs> yes. um i don't know what so, that's like i actually think to, to in case people are thinking we're serious i think the uh mm. i think it is in everyone's benefit and best interest for people writing about games to have as access to as many games as possible because a if you're just randomly playing something because someone sent you a code you're probably more likely to write about it and b you're more informed about everything anyway so i don't think there's any issue with getting access to games because that is our job is to write about them so it's fine yeah but i also do like being corrupt because that's how you win in it ultimately (laughs) so um I quite like, uh, there was a game that came out recently called Beyond Galaxy Land, which I've had wishlisted on Steam for ages. That's not a real it's, game. That's not a real game? Yeah, it's, um, it's uh, like a, it's like a sort of 2.5D, it's got oh, Final Fantasy I have seen combat, this. but it's like, it's like a space exploration, you're kind right, of right, doing right, like right, a right. hand solo kind of thing. And, it, and, and, and I, um, and I was like, and then it came out and I was like, Oh, I, don't know, I don't know, it's a bit of a lean month. I probably shouldn't get it. And then literally the next day, the Epic uh, press account was like, we've got that. And I was like, yes, yes, yes. it's effectively saved a tenner. Um, now so, you've mentioned it on this award-winning podcast. Yeah, exactly. Go and buy that. It's a really good game, and it's uh, and it's incredible. Uh, it's got a beautiful art style. Um, yeah, we're not allowed to review games on this podcast, though, Tom. Uh, we need to move on from that. Uh, so yours is Bioshock 2, did you say, yeah? It's, well, technically, it's not. It's, it's PGR 2, the the track expansion. Oh, sorry, is... by that point, I'd stop listening. So PGR 2. <laughs> yeah. right, I mean, okay. Minerva's Den is, best, is like one of the best DLCs ever. Yeah. So it would win, because yeah. Bioshock 2 is also good. But like I said, I didn't buy it myself. Yeah, I bought as the, the, the only DLC I remember ever buying. Apart from I did buy some Ultimate Team coins <laughs> once and hated myself so much. It was like ten pounds worth. Is Ultimate Team my, better than FIFA? Is it better than FIFA? As in, what's that yeah. kind of well, question? Ulti- is, that? Is, ultimate, is, is FIFA Ultimate Team better than like playing? A game no, I it seems that is, awful. It is playing FIFA. It's awful. It, but you play FIFA still. Do you mean, do you mean just, football manager? Got... Ultimate Team's just an, it's like a mode it's within just, It's just FIFA a mode within FIFA. Like, I don't know what. Yeah, but I, I thought Ultimate Team was like, isn't that like some card collecting panini? Yeah, but bollocks. you still play as the, you still play, you still play for, you still play the game. It's just the players. Oh, all right. See, I don't, I don't know these things because I don't get in packs. I don't know these things. I don't play shit. Games. It's like if you get like your Squishmallows uh, sticker yeah. book. Yeah. And it could play FIFA. That's like if you want to understand it more simply. Do you know how but, uh you've like, lost me. you know like you had sticker books as a kid, yeah. Jim. Yeah? yeah. Imagine that sticker book is a squad of players right. in FIFA and you just play with those stickers. Yeah. Right. But they've not got how do they kick the ball if they're they've got they, any they've leg? got they've they they're, they're, they're like uh <laughs> grafted onto humans. Right, okay. Um, right, let's move on. Sharif, um, when you told me what <laughs> your pick was, I was in the middle of doing something else, and I just didn't Please say it's not Star Citizen. I, can't I was do like, it again. I was like, oh, fucking hell. You know what? Totally forgot to mention in the intro that this episode is inspired by the release of Shattered Space. Um, really? And, uh, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah what is Shattered Space for people who uh, don't know? It is the new expansion for Starfield. The That's Bethesda. right. That's like, oh, yeah. Sounds like we're sponsored by it, but we're not. Yeah, we're not There's sponsored no sponsor by it. There. There's no sponsor there. We're not, we're not Jim just forgot to say it. I just like forgot to does. say it. I just forgot to say why this topic yeah. is. Uh, it popped into mind. Um, I didn't Do steal it. it off Bertie. Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of Bertie, right, there was a, there was a, a thing on um, one of the Eurogamer videos recently was uh, a preview that Bertie had written, um, which had been, you know, adapted into a video. 
And one of the comments was, why can't Bertie voice his own videos? <laughs> Like, like seems so very... as if he's like too lazy. <laughs> People get mad about the weirdest thing. Uh, all right, okay, Sharif, please tell us what you're picking. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I wanted to go with something bombastic for the last video episode, uh, but unfortunately, I couldn't think of something that is. Just tell be... us while you're juggling, then. Just like set something <laughs> on fire. Yeah, Maybe. just add some drama to it. Juggle some knives while you. I t- I try, but like it's it's you know maybe Uncle's there is a juggler. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, there's a whole history of the Ori family uh, that we don't need to get into. The, uh, the Ori crime family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I you know I try. This is something of an undeserved. The reputation that I can be sometimes a, a smart ass on, on, you know, with regards to my picks. I genuinely don't meet, intend for that to be the case. Uh, so I'm going to go with something a little simple and very much uh, on brand for me. Uh, if you've uh, listened to this podcast before, if you've watched any of the VG247 videos or anything like that, you'll know that I like Diablo. I play a lot of Diablo. I cover Diablo a lot for the website. So it wouldn't surprise you to know that my pick is Diablo related. It is not, in fact, Lord of Destruction for Diablo 2, because uh, I wasn't old enough to appreciate the changes that that made to the game. I just, it was like, came on Diablo. Uh, my pick instead is Reaper of Souls, which is the expansion for Diablo 3, which, in my opinion, is so transformative that you could very easily have two versions of Diablo 3. Of two, like that, we got effectively two timelines of Diablo mm-hmm. three. One that released uh, with the auction house, all was online and all that stuff. And then we got the alternate version of that, where at some point during development, they looked at all of that and they were like, "Well, most of that." And they were like, "This is really bad. We need to fix this before the game comes out." Obviously, that didn't happen. So we instead have these two versions of Diablo three. The one that came out that had so many problems and so many fundamental design changes to what a loot game and a Diablo game is that it really is fascinating that it came out the way it did. It was a fun game, but it was designed in such a way uh, that really the goal of the game was just NFTs before NFTs were a thing. It's quite fascinating if you look at it now from uh, the perspective, you know, in a post-NFT world where the point of Diablo 3 wasn't so much to get loot and be powerful. The point of Diablo 3 was to farm gear so that you can flip it on the auction house for real money. And so Blizzard's incentive was to make the game as grindy as possible, to make the rarest, most prestigious, most powerful items so expensive that that becomes your goal as a player, not to have them feel powerful, but to flip them on, on the auction house. Because when you do that, they get a cut. And then you feel good, I suppose, that you sold something for real money. And I know people who have made actual real money off that. It wasn't a scam. It wasn't like, it was, it was a simple auction house. Uh, uh, everything was above board in that sense. But the problem was that this was no longer a game. Like you were creating something. Like if you look at the NFT games and the crypto games that are out now, it's like play to earn, man. And like leave it running for this and get these optimized the earn rate. This was effectively Diablo 3 in everything but name. Like it was, it was like there was really the game was just a facade for you to make this uh, 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 grind thing make sense so that it pays you later when you sell. That's uh, horrific. <laughs> uh, it was horrific. And I'm, I'm genuinely glad that uh, it died with Reaper of Souls, which is why I think it's a massive uh, and a very important moment for that game and for the industry. Because what Reaper of Souls did, Reaper of Souls was the first expansion for that game, it added new content blah, 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 all the stuff that you expect from expansion. But crucially, the two things that it did was abolish the auction house. Auction house was gone. And then when they removed it, underneath it, they found this all of these rules that they had constructed around loot to make it specifically as unfun as possible for normal people who just want to play a loot game and feel powerful. And they were like, oh, we no longer have this incentive to get a cut from the auction house. So here you go, loot as it was intended. And so they, I think they called it loot 2.0. Uh, which was Diablo that you, that you would know when you would get powerful, you would have like activities you would farm and get loot. It was just an, a normal game and no longer had this shadow of the auction house looming over it. Uh, but also the other thing that it did is that it introduced the Paragon <laughs> system, which is actually coming back with Diablo 4 soon, also with its first expansion. 
uh, uh, in a couple of weeks here. Uh, and the Paragon system made the difficulty more accessible to people. It made it super customizable that you can effectively add percentages and you can see how much difficult everything was and how mm. more rewarding it would get. So it's like, okay, this is going to be 10% more difficult, but you get this much more gold and then this much more XP. So huh? what do you think? No, it's too much. Okay, go back, roll it out. This flexible difficulty system that I think was, again, ahead of its time if you look at accessibility in games now and how customizable things are now. And it, you, you look at it uh, from the perspective of, like, you know, obviously hindsight and everything to go along with that, but it, it really specifically looking at Blizzard's history and, and Diablo, and you look at how much that has changed the game. I genuinely don't see a world where the original Diablo would have existed uh, the way that it did. So I think Reaper of Souls not only saved Diablo, I think it sort of put us back on the right timeline in a way. You know the 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 the, the, the right timeline. I don't know anything about. I don't really know anything about Diablo. I mean, beyond the basics, right? So I didn't know about any of this auction house stuff. That really, is, that that was a is massive incredible. disaster. It was a big deal at the time. Was, yeah. When was deal. that? What was this? What, what twenty twelve? Hang on. Uh, oh, when the reverse yeah. souls got out? I had a uh, I had a big kind of gap, sort of from. Oh, must have been. I don't know, like yeah, especially in terms game, of PC 2014 gaming, was like I, yeah, from about 2006, I was just I wasn't playing anything. I played if it wasn't I think on 360. I, played, basically. I think I played it on PS4. I think that yeah. would have been the version that would have had all that update in yes. it, right? Yeah, yeah because it came so to PS4. It's a later. very good game. It's probably like it's one of my favorite PS4 games at the time. Yeah, it's very good game. Loads. That's my, mad, Mike. My, my, I think you've you've done well there, Sharif. My only question Thank is. And this, like, Reaper of Souls was an expansion, right? You paid for it? Yes. Yes. If you didn't buy it, did you get all the quality of life updates and changes? Uh, some of the stuff, yes. Like, the auction house obviously was removed for everybody. Uh, uh, there were some fundamental changes uh, that were made for everybody because it wouldn't make sense for people to have two different versions mm. of the game running. So, so by then, by the point then is... The major update here wasn't really Reaper of Souls. It was the, as the expansion, it was the core update to the main game, which isn't really DLC. Yeah, but it wasn't so much like the timing of it and the way that they justified it. Uh, mm. It really took a lot of work. It, but they couldn't feel justify like, it without. Like you've just, I think you've lumped it onto this paid DLC, even though it isn't really part of it. I, um, like you've, uh, you've, you've the thing about wrong there. no, I, the th thing, I, th I think you're being, I think you're being a bit. I of think, a, I think I'm right. No, I think I, I, point out no. actually that the no, core no. thing that's being talked about here. But there's, a, I think there's a, a very update to the main game and not reprint. No, Souls because I think I think there are plenty of. I think it's a very, it's an established thing uh, with a lot of these sorts of games that they're like like b big dlcs often come alongside yeah. massive core updates to support them um and uh and and obviously i think it's pretty obvious that that stuff came in as a package with the dlc it's pretty obvious thought, i could have played i could have got those updates without buying the dlc though <laughs> but the, the, the point is uh i think you're uh, kind of being a little like okay uh online games live service games that's how expansions work for online games. Like you can't say, oh, I'm out here playing Destiny 1 without the Taken King or I'm playing this without, like that's not how it works. This is a one game. And so the expansions, I mean, yes, like you're buying the new content. You probably shouldn't get into the weeds of uh, Destiny expansions given that half of them don't fucking exist anymore. Um, all yeah, right. But the point is like, it's not like a single player game where you can just like visit a new town or not as part of yeah. that expansion. No, this is like, a massive thing because everyone has to be on the same page. So I yeah. think it's like it's unavoidable almost. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll I, th see I, th I think, think those sweeping changes did come in as part of the DLC, from what Sharif is saying. Yes. I'm willing to accept that. So uh, it was like a I, difference I'm of a week. Just missing your challenge completely out of hand there. All right, I've got to pick something now. So I think I know what's this going to be. Donaldson says that's too loud. All right, okay. It's not here. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. The, 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 there's uh, there's a few good ones here. I think I feel like I feel like Bioshock Two might have been a better pick than PGR Two, Tom. 
It is. I'm not denying that. Yeah. So, well, you're right then. Um, <laughs> and I, I do like, I do like Mario Kart 8, but I feel like Sharif's pick is an actual proper expansion. And, is it and he really is it an picked, update? And he is it really an pitched it. And the way you, and, and, and you know, the fact that it comes along with this massive. Uh, fundamental change, not just to the game, but to the fucking business model. That's enormous. Yep. Um, that is that's actually quite incredible. So I feel like you're just showing your ignorance here, Jim. No, I'm not. You don't I'm... understand. You don't understand how this works. You're like Sharif just sold you on this lie. And you're like, yeah, lap it up. Yeah, I mean, well, the uh, whole... I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to say PGR two. And had win, and had you how lied, tracks, how many tracks are and in if the Sharif, If Sharif is pulling the wool over my head, if Sharif is lying, like, right? Forty eight tracks, Jim. <laughs> yeah, forty eight <laughs> tracks were added. Yeah, but it didn't fundamentally some change. Yeah, some of them were quite. But, some of them were quite good. But it didn't and fundamentally added change. All new tracks didn't change the business model of Mario Kart, though, did it? Just because they added loads from I'm the just, mobile game, uh, li- listen loads to of me, reworked right? ones from the old game, doesn't mean I'm it just wasn't saying, good, Jim. Look, I'm not saying it's a bad pick. I'm just saying, I'm just saying the way the way Sharif pitched that, I I was actually I found that fascinating. Well, he's and done I you there, hasn't he? Well, <laughs> just wait and see. If Sharif is lying, right? If Sharif has pulled the will of my eyes in some way, he's not lying. Oh, he's, he's not lying. It. All right, he's okay. Twisting it to make it seem like it's this <laughs> big, yeah, the big, like. the oh, big you mean, DLC did you, everything. It was you, all the DLC. You, you, you mean he's pitched, actually you mean he's, alongside the DLC? You mean he's there was pitched it really well. You mean he's made a really good argument. Oh, there we He's go. Saying that you fell for it again, haven't you? There we go. Sh- Sharif again. wins, and and it's Sharif's first win in fucking ages. So you know, re- re- what does that tell you about Moses' pick? <laughs> <laughs> there was a time when Sharif was on a winning streak when he on every appearance um, he'd won, and then at some point, uh, and then at some point, I just decided it'd be funnier if he didn't. But that was really good. At one Sharif. point, at one point next, Sharif was uh, your favourite, right? At one point, you love Sharif. Everything was all oh, I, I love Sharif. Sharif. I love everything he says. And then he's dropped down the, the pecking order a bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, when is this, when is the next audit? I think I'm. I'm still. Uh, uh, if you look at the number of appearances versus number, you know, uh, against the number of wins, I'm still pretty high up, if not the the top. Which I think is the only yeah, metric yeah. that matters. Because if you just the, look the at the appearances it, to wins ratio, is the, it's the only metric that matters. Yeah, it's like you know, because yeah, like, Alex yeah. is always going to have because he's on most of them. He's always going to have them. Well, that's just like saying like um, Alex has been yeah. off off the podcast for weeks and weeks and weeks. So I, I, I genuinely wonder if he's been overtaken now. Mm, I interesting. Who was but next thought it's going to be interesting. Him. Him. I think it might have been like Tom, then Bill Cliff, and then Cal Sue. I can't remember. I was I remember, pretty high up on that. Yeah, you were pretty high. And then, yeah. Sharif, you were kind of at the bottom. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but then you said, I think that's the episode where you said, but if you look at it, uh, uh, considering yeah. the number of appearances, I'm pretty high up. Uh, I, I was listening to that with friends in a car, and, and they were laughing at your uh, I, characterization of the of like the wins and losses. I can't believe that you were listening to this in a car with friends. Yeah, because That's mad. I, ha- I have some people who who, who listen to, to this podcast and occasionally send me like stuff about like the the things I say and and because uh, some of them are obviously related to where I live and and stuff like that, so they can. He just refuses release. to drive them anywhere unless they listen to the podcast. <laughs> That's right. So I, I don't. Not I, I do car. not own a car. I, just, <laughs> I was a passenger. Uh, but yeah. Uh, that's, mad, that's mad to me the idea that people you know what one of the um one of the IGN guys we were talking to mentioned that he, he was listening to this um podcast while like driving th- through California and I was like that's wild to me the idea like some some I just imagined I don't know I've no idea what he drives but I just imagined him like d- <laughs> driving up like in some sun sun kissed like convertible blaring like <laughs> Tom talking about a child pooing in Lidl. Lidl. <laughs> um, and I imagined uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger doing the same in his Hummer. Um, yeah, so I don't know. That was a really good win, Sharif. I think you pitched that really well. I think Thank you, you deserved it. Uh, you. Don't listen to Tom. He, he just, he's just playing mind games. So that is the end of, uh, well, be the last video edition of this podcast certainly for the foreseeable. Uh, but it's not the last edition of the podcast because it will carry on in audio form where it started, where it'll always be. You can subscribe to that on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, as we say. Um, 
Yeah, so uh, we're just not doing the YouTube version anymore because it takes quite a while to put together. Um, Tom, there is an extended version of this podcast, and if people mm. want to subscribe to that, we should stress as well that that's not finishing. Um, so if you want the extended version of the podcast, go to VG247 and click the Support Us page and all the details are there. Uh, it's two ninety nine a month, and uh, you get an extended podcast, ad-free access to VG247. and um, yeah, that's about it, really, isn't it, Tom? There's nothing else, unless you want to... Uh, that's it, really. Yeah. That is it. Yeah. But you obviously, when you do subscribe, you get all the old old stuff as well, right? Of so course. if you've really missed all that, you think, oh, I really want to know what Jim picked for that topic <laughs> <clears throat> two months ago. You can go back yeah. and listen to that if you want. I really want to know what Jim Trinker said about this two months. I don't think anyone's ever thought that, but, you know. That's fine. Uh, yeah, there, there's a there's a wealth, there's loads of episodes that you can go back to. Um, so we're about to do the extra bit now. Uh, if you're not a paid subscriber, this is where we love you and leave you. But if you are a paid subscriber, this is what you're paying for. 